Now, you know what a lot of people are going to say here? That this coil is receiving background RF energy and rectifying it into DC current here. Now I took this coil way out into the woods, miles from anywhere, and it behaved the same way. Okay? This, this is uh, like, um, this is a, t <clears throat> this is, this is a four wire coil wrap from Radio Shack. It's for an intercom. I couldn't think of that word. This, so what I have here is two high voltage bifolar wraps, okay, in series. Two Tesla high voltage bifolar wrap coils in series. This came right off the shelf and uh, from Radio Shack and I, and I stripped the leads. This took about, this took about five minutes to hook up and it's been charging that capacitor constantly the entire time. Now I had a sphere magnet inside these coils and I thought the magnet was generating the power when it's not. This power is coming from these high, high voltage coils alone. Now over here I have one of my first quad fillers. That's what this is technically. It's a quad fuller coil that's uh, wrapped twice to make two series coils, two series high voltage bifollers. Same with this spiral coil. Now, you can do several things. You can put them in series to output high voltage. Or you can um, use one for a drive coil and the other for an output coil, high voltage output coil and high voltage drive and trigger coil with a Bedini. Now what I did with this setup over here, and this is really uh, an entirely different subject. You can see here my um, my sphere, my one inch sphere. Now I got that one inch sphere spinning and then I I dropped it inside the core of that 32 gauge magnet wire, all right? So I had that magnet sphere, that very, very powerful one inch neodymium magnet sphere, spinning at full speed, maybe 25,000 RPMs inside the core of that thin high voltage magnet wire coil. Now, what I was interested in was duplicating or replicating uh, Twin Beard's uh, delayed lens effect where he um, he gets the uh, the rotor ball to spin up as he applies a load to the output coil. Well what I did in my experiment was I shorted that output coil which was a big mistake because that magnet sphere fired like a cannonball out of that magnet wire coil with such force I believe this could uh, could work as a, uh, a powerful electromagnetic cannon of course you'd have to fire magnet spheres but this I think would pulverize a cinder block you get it going 25 or 30 grand in that core and short it, go BOW! That sounds like a thunderbolt 
going off. I can't tell you the damage it did back in my in my warehouse, so I'm going to have to be very careful with my next experiment. I have a plan for this, but what I want to point out here with this video, you can see here now, I have to go into the next voltage range here to measure the voltage on the capacitor. Just one second. Yeah. I'm up at 57 volts, 58 volts. Look at the rate at which the voltage is climbing on that little cap, on that tiny little cap. And there ain't a damn thing attached to that coil. What you're looking at there works just as well way out in the woods. There's nothing there except the two serial bifolars. That 2.2 microfarad capacitor and a fast switching shock D diode right there. Let me see if I can get a nice close up in here. Yeah, that's it. I, think, I believe there's a little piece of germanium in there. I'm not sure, but it would be the same kind of diode you'd find in a crystal radio. But if it's rectifying uh, radio frequency radiation into DC power, it's doing it from cosmic rays too because it works the same way out in the woods and I could demonstrate that and not from uh, you know radio broadcast towers here in the city anyway so I'll be back when uh, I have more to show bye for now